Our Bible lesson for this evening is in the Gospel of Matthew, a well-known story. Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. Chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and they star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, and he would stop over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, as we celebrate Christmas, help us to learn with this story how to be a Christian. How be a disciple of how to follow him. Bless us during this time. We pray in his name. Amen. As I said, we're very happy that you came to worship with us in this special event in Christianity all over the world. People are celebrating. And during this season, we have been visiting church. Uh, in our sermons, in our message, we, we visit uh, Nazareth, a church very involved with the uh, tradition, very traditional. And sometimes those uh, they got in trouble because of that. When the tradition is more important than the Word of God, then you got in trouble. The last message that we preached, well, we went to visit uh, the church in Jerusalem, the Church of Jerusalem, and the Church of Jerusalem is a church involved with politics. You know what happened when churches are involved, more involved with politics than with mission, with evangelism, with the teaching of the world, making disciples and all that kind of thing. Today we're going to visit the Bethlehem Church. The Bethlehem Church. It's a fascinating church. And this church will help us to understand some essentials of the church, important things that the church is supposed to do. And this event we, is connected with the Magi. The Magi came from the east. They went to Jerusalem first, visit the church. The church had no idea what they were talking about. They said about the, the star. They, they saw the star. And they came because they believed this was a very important event. It was a universal event going on at that time. And Herod had no idea. The religious leaders had no idea. And this event here, the Magi story, sometimes we got wrong because the Magi story happened, at least the scholars think, that happened a year and a half, almost two years after Jesus was born. So they did went, you, you saw the, the, the manger and all the thing, and they saw the Magi there. The Magi, they did not visit the manger. They did not go there. They, they went to a house. You see that was there. That they entered the house. So Jesus was born in a, there in a cave. And then after a while they found the house. And they stayed there. And then a year later the Magi came. And it's interesting because this is why Herod asked the, Mag the, the Magi. When the, you saw the star. When the baby was born. And they, and they told him. And this is the time that Herod calculated the age of the boys to kill the boys in the city. He said, okay, we know that the boy is under two years old. So go there and kill every boy under two years old. Because for sure we're going to kill that baby. So this is why they, they have that timetable. So the Magi were following the star they saw. They believed that was a sign from God. And we can learn when they got there, 
worship, they did all those kind of things, and we can learn from them. So let me share with you a few lessons with the church in Bethlehem. First of all, it's a church where strangers are welcome. Isn't that great? That church is a place where strangers are welcome. And here we have the church of Bethlehem. Can we come in? Yes, we can come in. But they don't speak the language very well. It's okay. Their color is different. It's okay. They're from another country. It's okay. You are welcome. The church is supposed to welcome strangers. And this is what they did there in that house. They welcomed the Magi's with their culture, accent, language. I don't know how was the communication between them. We know that Joseph and Mary, they, they didn't have a lot of school. And speaking another language would be a challenge for them. But they find a way, they found a way to communicate where people who are willing to serve God and follow Christ, they were welcome there. No matter their background, the church is not a place for uniformity. It's where people from different parts of the world, or different people, culture, they can come. And they are welcome. So this is a great lesson from the church in Bethlehem. Strangers are welcome. The second lesson that we learn with the church in Bethlehem is that the church is where people are glad to come. They, they start stopping right on top of the house. And the word that Matthew uses to describe the feeling of the Magi is that they were overjoyed. We did it. We came. Wow, we found a place. No GPS. Well, they have their big GPS right on top of that, right? A divine GPS. But you know what? No address, no numbers. The house, nothing. And for some of us, for some of them, I don't know, there's a story of the Magi that kind of said, oh, it's too far, I'm not going. <laughs> you know, it's too far, it's in another country. I saw the star, yes, I believe. Yes, God bless him. But I'm not going, it's too far. And other people, they would stop in, in, in Jerusalem and say, okay, we came, we talked. They had no idea what's going on, let's go back. It's too far. But those guys, they, they kept pushing and going. That's insisting. Let's go. We need to find. And they were overjoyed when they found them. Isn't that great? If each one of us would have joy in our hearts when we say, Today is Sunday. Sometimes says, today is Sunday. Oh, come on again? It's seven days already? I can't believe that. No. Church is a place where people are glad. You should be glad. Here, we meet our brothers and sisters. Here, together, we worship God. We meet with Him. Here, we listen to His Word. Here, we sing praises and glorify Him. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. And we should, have, we should be happy to come to church. So churches, people are glad to come. There is one more thing that we learn with the Bethlehem church. It's a church where Jesus is worshipped. When they came, they didn't come. Pay attention to that. They didn't come for Joseph. They didn't come for Mary. I'm going to say it again. They didn't come for Joseph. They didn't come for Mary. They came for Jesus. They didn't come because they knew that there was a priest there. They, they, they knew that Herod was coming too. No, they came because the shepherds were there. Or the mayor of the city was there with them. No, they came for Jesus. 
and more than that, they came to worship Jesus. They recognized that Jesus was the King of the Jews and more than that, because they bowed down and worshiped. Mary and Joseph in that situation, the neighbors in that situation, because those guys, they were rich guys, they were important guys. They were not just three guys in a camel and, uh, and three camels coming along from Persia. No. They had a caravan. They had bodyguards. You know, those guys, they were, they were wise guys from a king. And the king would not just let them walk in the desert, go there and see whatever you want to see. No. We're going to have people with you. And they came. And suddenly they had almost more people than the, the, the city of Bethlehem with them and all that kind of thing, movement, and, and people dressed in a different way, talking a different language, all that kind of thing. And those guys, when they see Jesus, they bow down and worship. Worship. This is what we do when we come. We worship Jesus. We bow down. We recognize that we are servants. We are nothing. He is God. And we need to understand that. They recognized who Jesus was. And they worshiped him. He was King. He was the Messiah. He was the Son of God. They recognized those things. It is a place where Jesus is worshipped. This is what the church is supposed to be. And there is one more thing that I'd like to share with you that we learned with Bethlehem, the church of Bethlehem. The church of Bethlehem is a church where the gift, gifts have meanings, symbolize something. And the text tells us that they open their treasure chest, they offer him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And some of you already thinking, oh, okay, here he goes again, talking about money. And I'm not going to talk about money. Don't worry. We don't even have a offering today. But I want to emphasize that everything that we give to Jesus should mean something to you and should mean something to Him. Everything that we give, our time, our talents, and gifts, our money, whatever we give, it means something to me and means something to you. And this is what they did. They opened their treasure and gave him gifts, and they gave three gifts, and you know they short. They got gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold represents it's a gift for king. So they recognized that that boy was a king. It points to the lordship and kingship of Jesus. But they gave him frankincense. Frankincense is a gift for a deity, for God. That is the, it's an incense that you offer to a God. They knew that. Maybe you didn't know, but now you know. It's a gift that they give, they offer. When you have to offer something to a God, you would put a frankincense there to make the smoke and to smell so that God would smell your gift. For some reason, they knew that that boy was more than just a king. That boy had connections with divinity. For them, that boy was not only king, that boy was God. And they did one more thing, murder. It's a spice, but it's a spice for a man who was going to die. Or who's already dead. You put in the clothing and you embalm 
that person who you ignore is going to die. That person is going to die. There's something related with this boy about death. And they knew something. Why are we going to give this to him? We're going to offend the family. We're going to offend him giving something that we give to dead people or people that are about to die. Something. Something was there. Maybe they didn't understand the whole thing. They just kind of grabbed something and let's go. Maybe they knew more than we, we know. But we know now that Jesus didn't come just to be a king, to be a boy, to grow up. Jesus came to die for your sins, for my sins. Death was part of the deal. The Bible tells us that the blood of Christ was known before the foundation of the world came to do that. The blood of Christ was known before the foundation of the world. When he came, he knew about the cross. And he came anyway. Those gifts were given to him. Go, frankincense, and word. And it's because of those three gifts, or kind of gifts, that we presume that there were three magis. We don't have the name, the numbers anywhere. We don't have the numbers. The Bible don't tell how many magi. It could be 15. It could be 5. It could be 6. It could be 8. It's because of the gifts. Go to Francis and murder and say, okay, there's three gifts. Each magi gave one, so there's three magi. It could be two magi gave gold, four gave frankincense, and, and five gave myrrh. Yes, it could be. We don't know. But those gifts meant something. So every time that you give to the Lord, you're telling me what that means. It's my dedication, it's my love, this being my love. This time that I'm giving, I'm giving because I love you. I want to see your mission. I, I want to get involved. I want to participate. I want to be part of it. It means something for him. It means something for you. So Christmas is a special time for our families. And we remember and celebrate the birth of Christ. And the church... Of Bethlehem is a great church. Is a great church. And help us to learn so many lessons. Jesus is the central person. The most important person in this generation. And it's because of that that we should bow down, worship, recognize that he's the king. He's the son of God. And he's the one that died for our sins. Have a blessed and merry, merry Christmas. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word and we ask you, O oh Lord, to help us to learn those lessons with this church. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.